Hi, I'm Willie, and welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to Security Saturday. And we're going to hop right into it. And our first thing I want to talk about is VPNs. Now, since I did the private internet access on an edge router video, I've had a couple other VPN companies uh, approach me and want me to test their services. And I'm going to do that, but I'm going to tell you right now, I am very comfortable with private internet access until they give me a reason to not be comfortable with them. And all of their policies and everything thus far uh, prove, or at least in writing, say that they want to protect their users or care about their users. Until they violate that trust, uh, I am going to continue to talk about private internet access. If you're interested in a VPN, they've got solutions for every device every network uh, if they don't have one available we can probably make it work so my affiliate link is down there in the comments so I just wanted to bring that up again I'm getting lots of questions about the VPNs and this is even who I use so um, I'm eating my own dog food on this it's not something that I'm just pushing off because I happen to be an affiliate I'm very happy with the service so let's hop over to our next story and if you're not familiar with 2600 this is a um, a hacker news site magazine and um, they are bringing back a ten thousand dollar bounty for Trump's tax returns and if you read this uh, they explain why they do it what they are looking for and they're looking for the returns from 2011 2012 2013 or 2014 or 2015 and they're pledging ten thousand dollars the first person who gets any of these tests provided they have not been disclosed to any other media outlet or already made a public this offer is only val valid while Trump is in office so if you read this it will talk about why they want to do that as well pretty interesting stuff so and you can come back you know bookmark 2600 and and uh, they've got you know pretty interesting stories all the time the next story, I'm going to pop this up on the screen, and uh, uh, vulnerable Wi-Fi dildo camera endoscope. Yes, really. So, <laughs> so what this is, is it's called, I believe it's pronounced the, the Sime. It's S-I-I-M-E-I. -I -I. And it is a vibrator. This is what it looks like right here. This thing's 250 bucks. That is an expensive vibrator. Uh, $250 is expensive for a lot of things, but I would especially think, um, you know, that that is an expensive that it's expensive for that. But here's what the the deal is. Um, it's got some security issues that could allow unauthorized people to view the video feed, right? So whoever you are, um, male, female, you're using this thing, you know, there's a possibility that, you know, unauthorized people could view that video feed. That's a huge problem. And uh, the pen test partners, this is the website that we're at. They're asking a few questions like, is there any reason a vibrator should also be a Wi-Fi access point? Uh, what about a vibrator which has an endoscope camera in the end of it? Should that vibrator also contain hidden functionality con to connect itself to Skype? Um, should it save videos automatically to a network share? Should it send pictures? What about if it has code injection in its web interface? So, um, you know, they uh, there apparently there's a lawsuit. Um, but the one thing that caught me and... Um, if you have ever used any of the Chinese made or um, security cameras, Dehua, I use Dehua. Um, and then some of the firmware in these other brands, I just did an install for a guy that owns um, an airport. He actually installed the cameras, but I went over and did all the network setup and um, helped him get it on his laptop and everything. But even though it's not branded Dehua, the the interface looks very familiar, and I will tell you that every single one of them had ha has had 
Um, and even I, I even thought I was buying some Dahua cameras one time, and it turns out that they were a ripoff of Dahua. But they all had a username and password of 888888, I think it was six eights, um, with the same password. And then they had sixes in the same password. And then admin. And it looks like that this has the... Uh, the AP built in with the SSID. I hope I'm saying that right. Sim I. I don't know if anybody out there has got one of these or experience with this. Uh, let me know if I'm pronouncing that correctly. But I, I believe it's Sim I. Maybe not. But anyway, look, it's got this default password of this 888888. So, um, that's that's kind of suspect. Um, and then apparently, what has happened? They've taken the code apart is it used a uh, code from a uh, commercially available uh, drone and the, the picture here says only at Toys R Us so they've taken code out of a drone and stuck it in a vibrator I'm, I guess if it works right um, and it says there's an account with admin that has a blank password that's not good basic authentication so there's no HTTPS which reminds me, if you are working with a company, and even if they're building you a website, and you don't think there's anything critical on that website, and they are not telling you, hey, we need to turn on HTTPS, we need to get you an SSL certificate, even if it's the $5 a year certificate, shame on them. Encrypt everything. Um, shame on them. Get a hold of me, and uh, we'll help get you straightened out. and We'll get everything, get your little green padlocks flying around everywhere, but uh, encryption should be everywhere so I'm gonna I'm gonna link to this and I just thought this was uh, and this was very interesting this is one of the first uh, times I've ever seen a story like this when it comes to pen testing it kind of gives a dual uh, meaning to the word pen test I guess all right so the next story that we're gonna talk about comes from McAfee and there is a uh, a, um, a zero day threat with Microsoft Office and they are being um, attacked in the wild. So it affects almost all versions of Office. Right here it says this exploit works on all Microsoft Office versions including the latest 2016 even running on Windows 10. That's heartbreaking because if you have read about Windows Server 2016 in conjunction with Windows 10 and Office 2016, I was getting really excited uh, because you are going to have some really good security controls all the way from you know the server to the client, and it was and well, and you're still going to have that, but and it's going to help with data loss prevention. But this, um, apparently this has been around for a little while and Microsoft just hasn't fixed it. And I'm sure all of you see the Word documents show up to your inbox and they're actually, you know, RTFs and they've got, maybe they got a link in there, click this link or whatever. Um, so what happens is if you, you know, if you are duped into running this, then basically the attacker gets full control of your machine. So I mean, that's, that's the short and the long of it. So I'll put a link to that. Go ahead and read that. Then the next thing that I've got, now this article uh, is actually talking about iOS 10.3.1 problems. So apparently after Apple pushed the 10.3.1 uh, patch, which is what we're going to talk about here in a second, apparently there are some other problems. Now, I don't know what those are. I'm not having any issues at this point, but I'm also going to link over here to the the Google link that talks about this. And what it is is there's a problem with the Broadcom drivers apparently uh, in the iPhone and Android handsets, and it creates a huge security vulnerability. So I'll link to that, and and you can read that. So if you haven't patched, I do suggest patching if you have a software update that is available for I always any software updates on mobile phones I always do them um, 
I've, I'm very lucky that I've had little to no issue. You know, some people have all kinds of crazy issues after they upgrade. I don't know why that happens. Can't explain it. But uh, the issue with the Broadcom um, uh, Wi-Fi stuff should be addressed quickly. So if you haven't patched, go ahead and do that. And a lot of people probably have, you know, under settings on the iPhone that 10.3.1 may be sitting there. And then make sure that you update your your Google phone, your Android OS. So those are kind of the quick stories that I wanted to go over. And I'm going to go over two more quick things. This Security Saturday is kind of kind of short. It may end up being shorter than the Knowledge Nugget last night. But i uh, got a lot of stuff going on. But I wanted to get some of these stories out in front of you. Um, I always like to talk about a little bit of software while we're here and this one that I want to talk about is file friend and um, what file friend is we'll go to this it is a file manipulation oops, a file manipulation and encryption utility and what is it what it does is you can split large fi files into smaller sub files you can encrypt or decrypt files and directories but here you can hide files in a in a JPEG you can hide text in a JPEG. So this is a free piece of software. I'm going to link to this. And, uh, oh, it looks like it was just updated today. 4-8-2017. So uh, check that out. They've also got some other uh, really cool tools like MyText, which is an alternative for Notepad that does uh, text encryption. So they've got all kinds of, of really cool little pieces of software. But I'm going to link to this. And I like the uh, the file friend. So being able to kind of hide things in plain sight, that's, that's kind of awesome. The Humble Bundle. If you've never heard of Humble Bundle, and I am not an affiliate, uh, but I buy a lot of books from Humble Bundle. And what they've got right now is they have the... Uh, Python Humble Bundle and you pay what you want and you know one dollar you get um, automate the boring stuff doing math teach your kids to code and then the no starch sampler eight dollars or more you get gray hat Python Python playground and Python for kids fifteen dollars or more you get black hat Python adventure on computer games of Python and the Python crash course so um, I already have Python Crash Course, but it came in this this bundle again. This is the book that I am learning. Uh, I am teaching myself how to write Python code, and I'm actually doing it more from a security standpoint. Um, you know, to to strengthen uh, my skill set a little bit. But you can do a lot of really cool things with Python really quickly, and there's a lot of tools that are already out there for security testing that are already written in Python. So being able to understand what's going on with the program is it's um, it helps more than I can even put into words. So um, right now you can go out, you can spend as little as $15, get all these great books. Um, you pay what you want, you know, give what you can, get the books, but then you have these books that, you know, that, that's the one thing. Yeah, we can't take away what's in here, right? That's that's always going to be there. So, and these books are awesome. And it looks like the money does go to the Python Software Foundation. And then it looks like you can also designate funds to go to a charity of your choosing. So, and my, my kids are actually learning. I've got them on Code Academy right now. But now that I have this Teach Your Kids to Code book, we are uh, probably going to switch away from Code Academy and go to Dad Academy. I don't know how that's going to work out, but... Um, it should work out okay. Then the last thing that I want to talk about, and there's all kinds of videos about it, and I just I just got to put this out there, um, is backups. Backups, it relates directly to security. Backups are so important. And there, there are a hundred different ways to skin this cat. Some places may need just, you know, one copy of the file every, you know, week. Some places need you know, versions of documents, whatever it is, work with your IT person or get a hold of me, you know, get a hold of uh, whoever you work work with uh, on your IT stuff 
talk about a backup strategy. Backups are so important. And usually I like to say that backup uh, the data is not really backed up in, unless it's in at least, you know, two to three different places. And so I have a very simple backup methodology that I use for home where uh, the what I would consider critical data is replicated to three different places so that if something happens to my machine and the one hard drive that I keep it on, then I still have those copies. So, um, you know, when you get into Windows, there's all kinds of things you can do. You know, you can do volume shadow copy. Now, that is not necessarily a backup solution, but it can integrate into other backup solutions. Uh, I work a lot with VMware, a lot with VMware, and my favorite backup tool for VMware is Veeam, and we replicate data centers um, in near real time to other you know, disaster recovery sites using Veeam. And then sometimes we do offline copies and stuff like that. You can check out Veeam. I'm not an affiliate. I do use the product. They have a free version of Veeam if you're running uh, an unlicensed uh, ESXi host at home or the free version. I shouldn't say unlicensed, but the free version. Uh, Veeam does have a free backup solution that would work. But whatever you do right now, talk about backups. I don't care. Send me emails. You know, let's talk about it. Talk to your IP pro IT provider, but backups are vitally crucial. So that's it for tonight. I want to thank you for tuning in. Uh, as always, my uh, follow me on you know Twitter, Instagram. All of my affiliate links, everything are down in the comments. I want to thank everybody for getting us over 7,500. Uh, subscribers at this point. Next giveaway will be at 10,000 and will be a big giveaway, uh, bigger than the last ones. So if you like the video, please give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe. Please comment and share. And if you want to be notified when I get new videos, uh, push the, uh, there's a little, uh, down there, there's like a little bell. Click that little bell so you'll be notified when I push those new videos. So uh, thanks for tuning in and we'll see you in the next video.